Real News. Honest and fun political talk weekly on the line 90.7 FM. We are joined now with some friends on the uh, other side of the pond who are going to give us their take on the British elections where Boris Johnson and the Conservative Party swept the map. Uh, They got... 365 seats. The Labour Party got 203. Scottish Nationalists, 48. And the Lib Dems, 11. Brexit Party and UKIP, 0. And Jeremy Corbyn will be stepping down soon. And I think Brexit's going to finally happen. And this will, I think, foreshadow a Trump landslide in 2020. So, everyone who is with us, would you like to introduce yourselves? Give a rundown of what you do, who you are, what your involvement in any of this is, or where you align? And... We'll dive into it. Hey, would you like to start? Before, and I'll come in. Hey, sure you. Yeah. I'm the leader of an organisation called Antifa Public Watch, and my aim is to dig every bit of dirt on the left and publicise it and show everybody what they're about. I expose the left-wing tactics and violence. Um, we're based in Leeds, UK. Uh, that's about it. Yeah. Sounds good. Who's next? All right. Well, my name's Vinny Sullivan. Um, prolifically hated by the left. Um, I've been everything from stabbed to, you know, had everything taken from me uh, by them. I, I run the Reality Report, which is grouped with Antifa Public Watch, and we're all about positive conservatism in a world which is very much collapsing. You see, we don't have the luxury of your amendments, we don't have your freedom of speech and uh, keeping an upper lip in such environments a very difficult task. So we're about asserting uh, patriotic rights, uh, the right to be proud of who you are, especially being British and white. It's something that's important, especially in a Western world, which is suffering as a result of very, very um, unpleasant plans. And um, I, I don't think we should be too optimistic personally about this result until we see something fruitful because in england we hear things again and again and it's always just red herrings we've had a prime minister in the conservative party that was wearing a hijab you know and all of a sudden because of the brexit party come into play we've got boris johnson and jacob reese mogg giving us everything we want to hear well until i see the uh, the, the, you know the the final product i'm going to continue to be a, a skeptic because it's difficult to remain optimistic when uh, you put all your cards in one one basket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. You want to see results first for actually, you know, you, you give them any sort of praise or optimism. Yes. Uh, anybody else that's what, in what? here? Oh, yeah. I guess not. Okay, so. So this. Oh, no, we got this, somebody. This guy, uh, Lee Shears, uh, he's not very good with you know speaking but uh he uh, he's actually a pretty important guy he runs around with a lot of people and a lot of cameras and uh they basically go out into these public events and they film everything that happens so the people that are running around masked up and committing violence Mm -hmm. he gets really close to them i don't know if you notice the logo he has but it's very sneaky so it kind of looks like it's a pro antifa logo and he gets in really close and if you guys check him out explain lee a little bit as a, he's as a got uh, he's got some amazing foot yeah sure yeah give us a rundown of him he and, is, uh, this um, guy here vinny sorry go ahead vinny well lee is a uh, one in a million and um there's a reason that we found ourselves together mm-hmm People which goes to places people only talk about going to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I myself have encountered many of the left and encountered many situations which are dodgy and dangerous. Um, And him and I share this one factor. If you Google our name, you'd read, you'd think we was football hooligan, lunatic, harassing, (laughs) you know, abusing, complete psychopath, Nazi, whatever's. And I needn't tell the audience that anyone who's done that well to get hatred from the far left is doing something positive. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. We got a lot of hatred when we brought Sargon here to Penn State. And it was only hatred from the right people, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, of course. But Lee is a legend. I mean, it, it, it's hard to summarize in a short time without boring everyone, but he is. But you'll have to go and see for yourself. I won't bore everyone. 
Yeah, sure. Um, I would. A I'm curious though. Did he get any footage of the um, Antifa protests the other I night? Hate politics as well. I hate politics. I can't do. I can't do it. <laughs> Which is weird, but <laughs> yeah. So what do you? So you hate politics, but do you feel like you're drawn? You have like you're forced into it now. No, well, well how, how it started was um, Tommy Robinson had been sent to prison. Yeah. The first time when he was exposing the grooming gangs. <clears throat> now, I attended a protest in Leeds because it was in my area. And when I attended there, <clears throat> there were loads of patriotic people, flags, everything. But on the other side of the road, there was a crowd of people. And it was stand up to racism, you know, and, you know, um, well established organisations, you know, with good reputations. But there was causing so much um, chaos, it was unreal. I mean, a police officer ended up getting a bottle thrown in her face and she was hospitalized. Was that by the Antifa people? Yeah, by, by the left. Mm -hmm. Now, the next day in the newspaper, on the headline of the Yorkshire Evening Post, far-right Tommy Robinson thugs um, injure police officer and puts her in the hospital. And I'm like, eh, I was there. <laughs> The, the, the right, these patriots never did such thing. But anyway, I took that on board and I attended another event and it, it was the same again. So I just started a Facebook page and the aim was to just find videos and articles exposing this behaviour and the page just shot through the roof. And um, now we, I go on the streets, I go to the, the events and... I got to confront these Antifa. Mm -hmm. I got the blame for him. I got the blame for him. He was anonymous for ages. I got the blame. <laughs> I'm I'm curious. Did any of you guys uh, go to the Antifa protests that were, I think, last night or two nights ago because of the conservative victory? In the uh, yeah, you, you have to, but when you when you see them quite often, I have to point out. When you are fake, most of us that protest only protest when you're truly losing or you've got something to it. If you're turning up when you've just won a, a victory, you're just you're just there for bad optics, really, uh, yeah. because they're going to smash the place up. They're going to smash the place up. They're going to make idiots out of themselves. It, when they turn up to our events, that's a different thing. Yeah, yeah. that's when when having a conversation with them, but. If you're just going to go, you've just, we've just, in theory, you know, I'm a skeptic, but we've won something. What are you, what are we protesting? You know, let them get a trunch around the head. Well, in all honesty, if, if, if I'd have been close to London, I would have attended there without, in fact, I was gutted when I was seeing the footage that I wasn't there. Do you know what I mean? But that's the where type of events that I would where it is, mate. You know where it was. If I can't go there, you can't go there. The last four times I go there, I either get arrested or the police tell me I can't go there. Wow. If I go, do they you know, know who me, you I'm are? Oh, oh, mate, know who I am. Wow. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, mate. I get Yeah. Oh, mate. Yeah, then, yeah. You're on a list then. Get, they just get, see you and they're get, like, nope, gone. I, so, with me, for yeah. a proper intro, uh, this is Vinny Sullivan of the Reality Report. He actually goes around with it, it, it used to honestly just be a group of people trying to engage in, you know, open media, just trying to document things for better or for worse. They're just there to document, film, and get the film out there. Right. Yeah. But it became very quickly that they had enemies that didn't want to be filmed and didn't want them filmed. And eventually it just became that they wound up being more towards right leaning because they just kept getting attacked. And eventually uh, they, they found this Antifa group uh, and a tip that they were going to commit terrorism in a parking lot. Huh. And this, this, this is where things get really crazy. These, there was somebody saying, Hey, these guys are masking up there. They've got weapons. There's like a whole bunch oh, of, there's like 40, 40 of them on this. Sir, if we're going to tell this story, it better be told specifically uh, very vaguely as well i've just lost four people I, to i'll be i will be, be very vague because several people actually got arrested in this just skirmish lost to prison for I, over a year each because I, of a five seen, and i'm not happy about it yeah I've seen all the video footage um and basically what happened was is they go there to basically ask them questions about their protest or what they're about to do or what why they're there uh if they're there to commit violence and as soon as Vinny confronts them they start attacking masking up 
a full parking lot uh, brawl broke out. If you Google uh, Battle of Seven Oaks, it'll probably come up pretty quick. Uh, eventually, one of the Antifa members attempted to assassinate Vinny uh, wow. by stabbing him in the head. Jesus. And it's all on camera. They stabbed him in the head. This Chad doesn't say anything to anybody. And he gets stitched up by one of his mates in a bar uh, while he's bleeding out of his head. <laughs> it's it's pretty crazy. But you can clearly see that there's just some people in suits that are trying to act you know, like normal individuals. And uh, one side got masked up and clearly attacked. There was women and children being attacked, uh, people's hair, be- women's hair being ripped out, women being thrown to the ground. It's quite a violent scene. And eventually people had to try to secure the peace. <clears throat> and the people that secured the peace are now uh, in prison. A uh, activist judge, in my opinion, uh, um, am I allowed to say what he said about the racism th- comment? Um, well, I believe the quote was, we're going to make an example out of racists like you. Yeah. Whoa. Jeez. Let me paint a picture for you, because on this, let me, let me paint the picture for you. Yeah. Uh, we're at an event in a, in a, in a hidden location in a, in a village town, if you like, if you can imagine a village town, what England was like, that's what it was, you know, away from the dangerous places, away from everywhere, a genuinely hidden location in suits on a weekend. 40 men and women in balaclavas, stab-proof vests, uh, ballistic gloves and weapons turn up in black on a sunny day in this village, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you were a policeman and you saw 40 men in balaclavas, you'd think, Jesus Christ, bank robbers, terrorists, right? Get the guns out. Yeah. You know, this needs to be treated seriously. Not turn up and say, move along. Never mind in a village. Now, anyway, they've turned up. They get... They're getting our event closed down. They've come well out of their way. So this is obviously conspiracy to violence, which carries a 10-year sentence in this country. It's, t- it is terrorism. And there were women and people with us that were genuinely frail. Now, they were they were keying up to smash this pub to bits, and the women, etc., would have been brutalized. Mm-hmm. So we either had to confront them at the car park, through them, everything would be hunky-dory, no one would be in prison, and everyone would be fine. But the thing with us is we're shadow banned into oblivion to the point where you'll hear about Proud Boys, you know, good luck yeah. to them. I, I, I'm very sorry to hear what happened to them. But because we confront them on such a high basis, you will not hear about We just lost four. One got a year and a half in prison. Oh, jeez. And, and a half. And, and, you're, and, and for, to be clear, like, your guys just did nothing but defend themselves? Is that what I'm getting you hearing here? And, and, and women that were getting thrown to the ground. Wow. At one point, so yes, there was some exchange. I mean, when I got stuck in the head, there was obviously I had a firm debate with the person I thought that it was. Wasn't Lucy Brown there? So, Did she get a huge chunk of her hair ripped out? Who was that that got their hair ripped out? Yes, that was Lucy Brown. That was, yeah. At the point that I got stuck, I was helping a woman up off the floor because she had wound up on the floor somehow. Hmm. And in the photo, there's a still shot of me getting stuck in the head with this military style. It was like a torch with military sharpened teeth and it virtually cut me, um, you know, it, like it, like it was a glass. Wow. Uh, anyway, but in the still shot, you can see this guy, this skinny guy is hiding behind his big chunky mate and he's got round and stuck me in the head. Now I was moving. Had it been any lower or higher, I'd have lost an eye or whatever. But, um, I'd never met him before. He was willing to just do that to me over what? Nothing. And anyway, the point is, the definition of terrorism is that the police turn up. I've now lost four people to prison. Good people. They're going to have to restart their careers. They, you know, they've got their own families, jobs they've lost now. For what? And everything would be fine. Everything would be hunky-dory, you know, good as gold. So I wasn't going to touch on that subject, but obviously you brought it up. And for me, oh, you know... I've got well, a lot of uh, love and respect for the people that are inside, and I'm not going to leave them behind. We leave no one behind. Yeah. No, I'm actually glad that was brought up because I had no clue this ever happened. I bet most of our listeners and viewers had no clue this happened. And what's always troubling, because I follow the Proud Boys thing a lot, it seems like, to in my opinion, a lot of activist judges are just – They don't care. They're just locking people up because they think they're racist. They think they're Nazis, even though these, like some of these Proud Boys were were married uh, in interracial marriages. And the Proud Boys are a multiracial group. And 
you see all this stuff happening and then the cops either are not even existent like at the scene of these things even though everybody knows like antifa's going to show up to this you know the cops here do, do do not show up at all or when they're there they do nothing um why do you think the cops just seem totally like police are terrified i i honestly cannot un explain to even omnis here omnis and i um are close i spoke to him for a long time and even himself i have to sometimes start from scratch americans do not understand how bad it is here and what it's like to not have actual freedom of speech mm. they don't like how spoiled they are um when you don't have speech, you can't stop the manipulation of your own police force, your your government. You can't stop your culture changing. Words are more powerful than weapons will ever be. A gun may stop something, but unless you can truly say pedophilia is wrong, then when you start saying, oh, but it offends someone, well, hang on, it just shouldn't matter. But your amendment, your amendment gives you the ability to combat things with facts. Mm. And it's something that only you have. And it's... Many Americans, I think, get depressed, and I think, in fact, they should they should be very um, proud of the fact that they have that. We're jealous of that amendment and, until you live without it. And our police are they, basically in some police departments and what have you, they will uh, not allow white men to apply for, for obviously multicultural rotors, and that can go for fire departments, um, obviously ITV, BBC, and these are all influential things. So. The patriotism you have in many police departments, you have no idea how lucky you are to have it. Mm. Here, it's a different world. It's a different world. Totally. Totally. I mean, yeah. they're totally against us as the police. I mean, I've seen a lot of footage in America, and the police are really steaming into these, you know, the Antifa there. Um, I've seen yeah. them driving them out with sirens, playing music. I've seen them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, I mean, I've been interviewing a few Antifa members trying to speak to them, get answers out of them. And there's two officers stood at side of me and they're not watching for an attack. They're watching me. And soon as soon as they feel it's ready, the time is right, they'll then step in, pull me to I've been I've been arrested four times in Leeds, my own town, for attending a protest just to video it. And I've been arrested within minutes. Why? Within minutes. They knew who he was. On the video, you can see the officer knew who he was. He said his name. I did find the video. Last time I went to Extinction Rebellion, I've, I've got a video on it. You can hear the police on the radio saying my name. I had to get out. It turned into Assassin's Creed in the end. I was in the crowd <laughs> trying to get out. You know, they're on the radio going. Did, did, didn't we check my footage before, didn't we? And uh, you heard my name on radio as I walked past an officer. Yeah. And it, 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 it is, it, I mean, and at this point, look, you start the game thinking, oh, I want to give people information. And the better you get it, you get so much information, you realize I can't use any of it because it's so spicy. You end up with all this information. You should and, tell and you them about the cops. You should tell them about the cops in red that show up everywhere you the special cops that show up when you guys are at the bar and you, anytime you guys show up to try to film anything. Yeah. I, I know a lot of what I can be I say can be listened to and I say things that are risky as it is. I'm not here to make any more of an enemy out of the police than they already are. But yes, sometimes special guys, people will stop me. And uh, These guys show up with me cameras. Try to, they're a media organization, right? And they try to show up to engage in free press. And immediately the police know who they are. And they're not the normal cops. They're special police that come out of, like, what was it, red card? Uh, you can see this in some of the videos. Yeah, I mean, the last protest I attended, I got surrounded by five police horses. I mean, I'm only five foot nine. <laughs> and I'm surrounded. I've got a body cam on. I've got my backpack. I've got my press card. You know, and I'm showing him my press card. He's even telling me that's fake. And it's, you know, you can't get a fake press card, a press ID. Um, mm -hmm. And all it is is a, a card with a photograph, the name of the organization, you know, basically saying I'm, I'm there for press, not for trouble. And I just got surrounded by four horses, five horses. And uh, this gave me a section 35, which means I have to disperse from the area within 40 minutes if I don't. I'm liable for arrest.
Wow. Wait, what's that type of officer you sell? It's called red card? What is that? Oh, no, no. Uh, this is... No, no, no. There was an occasion where a red car showed up and uh, it has specific types of police in it if you're in central London. And uh -huh. I don't really... I was speaking to Omnis, but... Um, it's, it, it, he's not slipped up by talking about it, but they're the sort of police that if you bang on about them, they were not. Then you would never get stopped by the police if you was doing anything else. Okay, that makes more sense. That, you don't see their uniforms anywhere else, or get those questions asked to you for no reason by anyone else. So, I unfortunately, my favourite place in the world, even though I've been to America, most beautiful country on the planet by far. The only thing you haven't got is, I think, what the Amazon, you know. Um, I've, I've been all over the place, but my favorite place in the world is still London, my 2000 year old city, as dingy and damp as it is. And now it's, uh, it is dangerous for me to go because my own government don't like my political views. So, uh, the heartbreak never ends over mm. here, ladies and gentlemen, never ends. So I, cause like I say, like you were kind of saying, well, we have the first amendment. We don't really understand how bad the police are there. Can the police in your country literally just arrest you for anything they want? They don't yeah. have any, yeah. you know, restrictions where yeah. no unreasonable yeah. searches. Section five. They can make just throw section five at you. Um, disorderly behaviour or a breach of the peace. You, or you suspicion. Even raise your voice. And that's what and they did to Tommy too. They said the breach of the peace. They think yeah. they. We had a suspicion he was up to something or conspiring violence or something, and we had to detain him for the public interest. You know, any any crap trap. I mean, all they do, all they do for the section five as well is take you to the police station, um, and you're in the waiting room five minutes, and the charge sheet's already on the desk. Wow. No interview, no nothing. Thrown out of the police station, a ten court, hundred and eighty pound fine, and all you've done is raise your voice. Wow. So what do you guys then do to get around this to, you know, confront Antifa, to confront these groups, non, you know, without violence, obviously, but to sort of like, how do you get around this? Like, how do you have, you, you know, protests? How do you make your voices it. heard? I don't get around it. From the gutter, I, just, that's how. I just ensure that I've always um, got camera recording and whatever happens, no matter what, as long as I've got that on video, that's all that matters. I mean, Two of the four times I've been arrested, two of the times I've had charges thrown on me like assault police officer, mm. um, criminal damage, you know what I mean? And because I've had the camera recording, you know, they've been dropped before they've even gone to court. But uh, nothing will stop me. I'll still, I'll still go. Um, I see if I get arrested within minutes, I see that as progress because mm. it, it might not show the Antifa, but it's showing the establishment, the police, the corruptness of it, you know. So how, I, I, I get success either way. How much do you think the average like Brit is is knows about this stuff, is upset with it, and you know wants an end to it? Is this just sort of something that's only happening in like the political circles know about? Or do the average people like know that this stuff happens and are pissed off I about it? I think the average person knows it happens but they don't know how deep it is, how bad it is. Mm. You know, I didn't even know that how, how desperate the police are when, when you attend these events. They just want rid of you. Mm. They will do anything to get rid of you. Depends on your power levels. <laughs> it depends on how much you know. Yeah. Do, do, you, do you think... I mean, they kind of, I mean, I kind of, answer, I kind of know the answer to this, but it seems like, like you guys said, they kind of know who you are, and all th these sort of things, how do they, like, do they have like a list? Do they go around, like, do all the officers know who the people on the right no, the there are going to show up are? One of the scariest things is the idea that if you're on a terrorist watch list, which I can only assume some of us are, because that's how this country seems to work, mm. that when they arrest you for something minute, that they can come in and say, oh, by the way, we don't have to let you go because you're on a watch list. Oh, I see. Wow. So when when you never know, and the thing is, um, put it put it this way: if I wanted to make up a cult that um, earned me millions of pound in donations, then I had mansions, and I said I was 
Mary Magdalene's second son or something. Everyone, they, the council would let me do it as long as I as long as I paid my tax. Everyone would let me do it. But if so, I can lie all I like and make money out of it. But if I dare start telling the truth, cuted. If I dare start saying things which are truly wrong, that suffer, and that's when we have to question society. Hmm. Well, I think, yeah. Sorry, what was that? I think the shoe on the other foot test kind of shows it all. I mean, imagine Chris Cuomo hears that there's going to be a riot that a group has uh, basically stated that they're going to mask up and oppose, uh, you know, quote unquote, fat uh, and. They're masking up to go do something. Chris Cuomo gets a scoop. He goes there. He turns on his camera. And then he sees from across the room the cops saying, you, you know, coming st just beelining straight for him and nobody else but him. They've just stepped out of a car. They're there specifically for him. Mm -hmm. And they're there to ask him questions. And he's got to duck them. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's basically the, the state of free press in this country. It's it's ridiculous. It would never happen. Jeez. I, this well, this stuff is hard for some like you guys are saying it's Americans conceptualize because we don't have it this bad. Like I I have so much sympathy for you guys. I mean, well, um, I mean just I mean, uh, we've the press as well. Uh, this straight bias because when the two events, the two protests that I attended when I wasn't running this organization, um, the right was constantly pointing out left-wing photographers constantly coming around the protest and taking photographs of the Patriots. And then they put these photographs online and then they expose them. Some of the Patriots lose the jobs, lose the home, you know, they get um, shamed and everything. So when they're getting pointed out, the police, their answer to it was, well, they're press. You know, it's a public place. They're allowed to do this. But as soon as we're going to do the same thing to the left, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. You know that, that that's when we're either arrested, um, sent away, or whatever. We cannot go near them, and that's that's that. exactly what it is. How deep do you guys think this sort of you know, I I could say corrupt police or police letting Antifa slide behavior goes? Are they answering from just the their bosses in the police division, or does this go much higher, you know, in the government and, you know, in, uh, you know, just the general UK parliament? I just go, this go on, go on, Vinny. Oh, I was saying, do you want to go first? Because I've got a lot. Yeah. Of this um, well, we've learned that um, there's, there's council organizations called the council, mm -hmm. which they, you may have heard of the council. They they buy houses and rent houses out. Um, it's them that fixes all the roads and um, you know what I mean. But they get funding. Um, Antifa get funding from these councils. Are these and councils like government councils? Yes. Yeah, they're all funded by the government. Um, we've noticed that. 90%, well, I'd say all, 100% of Antifa organisations are all funded also by the Labour Party, which oh. is the opposition of our government. Momentum starts. Just... I'll wait and then I'll give my take on and, and add to what he's saying because there's also additional forces that are at play there. Okay. Maybe not get all the way. Yeah, so we've, 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 we've got I won't, the, I won't go that far. I won't go that far. We've got, we've got the links to political organize political parties, um, councils, which are all linked to the government. Um, but yeah, with the schools, they're doctrinating them in schools and um, colleges. They're targeting the students to get them on board. Oh, Antifa's um, targeting yeah. students. How are they doing that? Well, what they're doing is that they're, they're putting all their propaganda in the in, in, in the colleges. Um, there's an organisation called the Socialist Workers Party. Mm -hmm. They sell newspapers and they're, they're similar to mm -hmm. Antifa, but they've got like, oh, right. they're more political. I'm too much credit. Um, You're giving too much credit. It's these guys that hang around the, the, the colleges and sell their propaganda to the students. And any protests that are going on, they'll attend the colleges and hand out pickets. 
so they can just hold these pickets. It, it's all, it's madness, mate. It, it really is. Vinny, you can uh, put a little insight into it. At that point, though, whether it's anti-fascist intel or actual street thuggery soldiers, when you see someone that's a member of a leftist organisation handing out leaflets, that is Bruce Wayne, and they think that when they're dressed up as Antifa, that's Batman. Don't be disguised. Or don't be, uh, you know, don't be misled. When you see a leftist giving out these things, they are quite happy to see Antifa bash you up, or they are the intel division. They are Antifa, don't be mistaken. But as far as how deep it goes, I have to remind everyone, the deep state, as it were, I'm not going to refer too deeply into it, mm-hmm. or the, uh, the system in place, has been here long before even, say, America existed. So being able to manipulate our law, manipulate our language, was done, you know, so easily and um, in, in the homelands, as it were, uh, it, with, with great comfort. So the idea, when people say, oh, we're talking out of conspiracy, I say, well, wear a Trump hat to work then. Go and talk about Brexit at work. You know you can't because you'll get fired. You know it's not a conspiracy. The point is, it, over here, when you say how bad it is, I think you know. I think you know, and it stems in every walk of life. Education, uh, your child is not safe. If your child is a victim of a rape gang and you go around to the house, you could be put sent to prison for racism. Mm. It means nothing. And it's hard for me to be too vivid without it being upsetting to understand how victim, how um, helpless we feel. When The day you realise that your authorities really don't care about you, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it's not just a myth. No, they will hide. Things. They will set you up. It's a very hard pill to swallow. And even people that are hardened soldiers find that when they find that they've been living a lie, it, it breaks them. Yeah. It really does. Uh, and it, but it does stiffen your um, patriotism and it actually gives you, you finally know where you're going. When you, when you lose all the falsehoods, you finally know where you're going. What hope then is is left there to combat this or, you know, make Britain great again? Right. The thing yeah, is, the public on board. I think that's the only well, way. That is the only way. Yeah, that nationalism and patriotism is a, a, a right, that it's not a cancer, that you should do it and you should debunk everything at a whim, no longer allow language laws to define us as a nation and to install some sort of backbone. That's the. But ultimately, people say to me, do you think you're saving Britain? I say, no, I'm blackpilled. I'm going down with this ship. I'm not going to leave. I know that we're in trouble, but we have, like I said, a 2,000-year-old city full of wonder, full of myth, full of legend, and um, we're not going down without a fight. It, we do not have any notion that we think we're going to win a war We've been left behind. We've been left behind. And any American as well, which teases us over it, I wouldn't tease Sweden over how bad they are. We need your help, boys. We need your help, boys. Well, then to switch gears back to what we were um, originally like talking about near the beginning, what do you guys think the recent election means for Britain? And why do you think there was such a huge victory for the Conservative Party that we haven't seen since Margaret Thatcher? On it, Lee? Have you got this or should I go on? No, you got The EU is the main, main thing for me. Um, Unfortunately, the, that's, all, that's all the public it, want. They just want to get out of it. It doesn't. Yeah, they they think it's Brexit related, but ultimately the two tier party system is a joke. You know, like I said earlier, it's not what it says on the tin. There's, there hasn't been a conservative party in this country since the days of Thatcher. Mm. You know, it's it's it, it only it's only what it says on the tin. In, inside, there's no beans. You know, um, so I'm yet to see anything. It means, as far as I'm concerned, it means bugger all. And um, if, as far as our old, some of our old leaders are concerned. If we was leaving the EU, it'd have been done day one, and we'd have felt whatever consequences yeah. and not given a toss about it. So, what this three-year malarkey is about, there's no excuse. I'm sick of the discussions. Let's leave. So, uh, Boris better do something about it, and I'm sick of people giving him credit until I see it. To be honest. Well, I've done it tactically, really. I mean, I'm not all for Boris now. I mean, I would just. For Boris until until this election was over, I just what I don't care who it is, I honestly don't. 
I just want to get out of the European Union and whoever's going to do it. You'd have cared if it was Corbyn. I mean, I'm not a Conservative supporter. Certainly not a Labour. Anything that's right wing, I am, you know, but. Within reason. Yeah, within reason. Do you guys think Jeremy Corbyn is actually going to leave like he's somewhat hinting at doing? Like, is he done for, finally? I don't. We, we were on about this the other day, weren't we, Vinny? Um, we, we don't really want him to leave. Uh, yeah. We don't. We, we don't because if, if he leaves, somebody else is going to come in. And what if he's liked? What if he gains or she gains all Stay the uh, uh, support? Away, back again. What the hell you know than the hell you don't. Yeah, that's exactly it. So I don't want him to leave. Interesting. He's a pawn anyway. It means nothing. Look at him. He's a frail snail shell. The guy. <laughs> yeah. He's got so many things that he's done wrong. <laughs> He'll <laughs> never get in power. Never. Yeah. Well, he's definitely not going to be getting the uh, Jewish vote anytime soon. Oh, I mean, no. yeah. I, I, neither will many people, but I'm sure we'll survive. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask um, these guys at Dictator Phil? I, um... I feel like, I feel like you answered a lot of what I was uh, like. Uh, thanks for first off, thanks Sean for uh, introducing me. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I did did a great very, job very nice with that. You. <laughs> you did a fantastic job. I just want to let you know. <laughs> no, um, but no, I I I feel like Jer uh, I feel like Corbin is a lot like uh, Nancy Pelosi over here. Am I still oh, yeah, Bernie? The, the Speaker of the House. Yeah, because it's like uh, she's in power, but it's not like she's not really much of anything, really. She's like, the, she, she's, a, she's a Speaker of the House. She really doesn't do much of anything. So it's like, well, I really don't care. If, if she's all that's in power, then I really don't care. But like, I of course, I don't want to see her in power, but I definitely would rather her than like somebody AOC, sensible somebody extreme like aoc going well flailing. it's a bit with corbyn because we fear if corbyn gets in power oh you know it's it's scary for you think really it's funny if corbyn was in power people like myself or lee we wouldn't know what would be our future that virtually they could treat us i don't even want to talk about it because you never know what could, when they could come into power and anyone who's done the things we've done could suddenly be considered worth kicking their doors in and putting them in prison for nothing yeah. we'll be, they're not, not pro like we'll be targeted straight away okay. immediately in, i got i do gotta you know what i sorry i'm really sorry i do have a question mm. uh so so guns are so guns are banned yes yeah uh, knives are banned, yes. Some, some yeah. within some like craziness. If right? you're using it for butter, yeah, you can own a gun. <laughs> you can own a gun here. It's just tight licensing. You yeah. can own a gun there. Yeah, you gotta get a permit, uh -huh. right? A license. So, well, it's, got to, it's got to a point now. It's got to a point now where if somebody burgles your house in the UK and you give that person a beating, you're getting a charge. Jeez. Uh -huh. Yeah. You are no, getting a charge. And it doesn't matter if you was in bed being woken up by this burglar or whoever. If you give this person a beating, you're going to jail. In some states, it's like that here. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's like that in California. <laughs> yeah. In I'd California, imagine. it's like that. Uh, I, I think in some areas in New York, it's like that too. Um, yeah, I would say they're, they're probably London light. Because they've got, look, I'm, I, London's gone extreme. Like they're, I, I almost feel like London is like the way of the future for California and New York. Because the, those, they're, those areas are like liberal central. It's so I, I feel like whatever's going on in London, it's like I'm, I feel like, I feel like. It California slowly follows thereafter. 
I live here. I know exactly. I, I live in California. I know exactly what's going on. So yeah. You poor soul. They want, <laughs> they want the coastline. It's very strategic. They want the coastline and all the shipping ports. That way they can control all the commerce. It's that simple. So they set up basically in these areas mm -hmm. to... Uh, well, it started with the voting laws, where with the voter ID laws, where you no longer need an ID in California to vote. As mm. soon as that happened, basically, people started pandering to illegal aliens, saying, "If you, you know, if you vote for me, we'll, we'll ignore what's going on in these neighborhoods, and we'll, we'll allow you to just flood as many people as you want." It. And that's, you know, that's fine up until a point until they start having problems. But then, when they actually need to confront these Congress people, they're like, "No, what? You're, you're not. You know, you're not here legally. We, you can't, you know, you, you can't have all of the rights of a citizen to speak out because we'll just, you know, deport you like anybody else would if you try to speak out or write a letter to your congressperson saying that this is, you know, unacceptable living conditions or whatever." And they actually. Uh, they actually implement uh, racist strategies in these big cities. Like I've seen it myself. I've lived in the wrong side of town where um, there's four different times of street sweeping on the same block. So each side of the block is a different time, right? And it's they're ridiculous times too. It's like 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., 3 a.m. to 4 a.m., 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., like very, very... Um, randomized and so what happens is everybody that's there on section 8 or welfare they've got all day for, for a parking spot because they've got no place to go but anybody that has a job has to circle around the block and try to most likely park in the red with their hazards on and then when they get four tickets a month which are like 90 dollars each and they can't pay them they get their vehicle stolen like by the police department they they tow it off the street and then they're allowed to sell it that day under the asset forfeiture laws. Like it was engaged in a crime, parking illegally, and therefore they can sell it. So if you don't go bail it out before they put it up on auction the next month uh, or the next week, sometimes, sometimes the same day, uh, you won't get your car back and there's nothing you can do about it. You'll get no money for it. So they steal all the wealth in certain neighborhoods and they make it so that you're only allowed to have small coffin apartment style houses where there is no parking. Like if you want to have a parking garage, get ready for some serious OSHA regulations uh, as far as uh, structural or anything. Even if you just want an open lot parking lot, it's actually like not really very profitable. So all of these things add up to there's no place to park and it's basically musical cars. So they steal the wealth from one neighborhood and then in the other neighborhood, they instill this ridiculous privilege where it's like street sweeping isn't until like one to four in the afternoon. There's nobody that parks there anyway because these are great big housing lots. And uh, they set it up this way on purpose. And then they basically point to that neighborhood. Look, these racists are stealing everything from you while they pocket all the money. God, that's awful. I mean, we were actually had uh, Trent Lipinski, who's a Silicon Valley... Um, former CEO, I believe, uh, he started a few, did a few startups and he was talking about California and he just had so many just horror stories of like some stuff that in a lot of cities you don't even consider a problem. That's not even a thing like the poop, the pooping in the streets of San Francisco and all these other places, the electricity just blacking out. It, it's, it's the, the, I, I don't see California ever getting any better until it gets really, really bad. It's got to get really, really bad before it gets any better, I think. But um, is there in uh, England, is there any part of England that ha has, like, well, I we kind of said London has kind of like California, but are there any parts of like England that are really conservative that have like a strong conservative presence or kind of like a Texas that we have here, which is super red? Our areas like that, but it's a, it's a very small country, you know, so like violence, like anything, it's such a small country that if you run your mouth, eventually it's, you can run into someone. It's the same with your political views or whatever. Um, would you say there's like a silent majority then? Like a kind of like a very silent, but you know, when it comes to voting, they're going to vote conservative, but they are. Yes. In England, there was once a time when if you ask someone who they were voting for, it was like, you know, farting in public. Um, 
you didn't you don't ask because we live so close together you know they're very secretive mm-hmm. um and conservative if you like with their views so uh yeah there was once a time when it was really taboo to ask someone who they were voting for it's like asking how much someone earns at a job you just don't do it mm. Nowadays, it's different. You, you know, you say, you better be voting for Conservative. Grab them, put them up against the wall. You better be, you know, it's a different all together now. You know, with um, the yeah, political... The, the, opposite, the opposite parties are extreme em- enemies, aren't they? Well, I have to point this out because I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on. It's half, it's 20 past one in the morning here. Mm. In the last quite years, since we've seen Brexit and Trump come about, we've seen a genuine increase in maximum cultural Marxism increase tenfold. What would have taken 10 to 20 years has taken three years. They've increased the craziness in an attempt to um, increase the plan, speed it up, speed it up, speed it up, because obviously... Um, we're sh- we are showing a pushback. They expected the intellectual level of the West to just falter, to just weaken and suffer. But I will say to the enemies of the West, you do your worst and we will do our best. Nice. Well, we only have about a few minutes till another break. So if you guys have any final thoughts, want to uh, mention where people can find you online, on social media or anywhere, um, please do so. And we'll close it out then after that. Hey, do you want to go well, first quickly? We haven't we won't yeah, have much. First of all, I'd, I'd like to thank you as extremely for um, giving us this platform to let you Americans know what what life is like in the UK. Um, you will be able to find Antifa Public Watch on Facebook. We have um, a page on there. You can find us on Twitter. On Hub. We're on Telegram. Instagram, MeWe, uh, Gab. Just search Antifa Public Watch and uh, we'll come up wherever, whatever platform it is. Uh, nice. But yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks for having us. us. Yeah, of course. You, you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for coming Sorry. on. Oh, no um, same, Vinny Sullivan on YouTube or the Reality Report. Um, unfortunately, if you Google us, please do not believe what you read. Um, if you do, so be it. It won't really falter us. I won't plug myself too much. You can find us on Telegram and what have you, like I said, uh, all of our other links. But I'd rather take this moment to say um, you are the last bastion of the West and we lo- we cherish you dearly. Please do not lose your confidence because we're not going to. We've got it far worse um, we're not going to let them beat us, so um, we need you. And the UK, the UK stands with you, side by side. Oh, it's a bit far, but we stand over here <laughs> with you. You know what I mean. No, we appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> and stand with you guys too. All right, we're going to duck out now because the, the, the right. signal has just gone up in the sky. The right wing signal has just gone up, Lee. They need us. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. see, let's go. see you later, like guys. Yeah. Take care, guys. <laughs> yeah, see you. Thank you. Oh, that was awesome. And, uh, yeah, you're welcome. And you can find me at omnislabs. O M N I S L A B Z. It's not quite up yet, but uh, it should be up pretty soon. It's mostly up. Ominous slaps, love it. Uh, but thank you for getting those guys on because I've talked to the one guy before, um, the Vinny guy, but I haven't talked to the other ones. But that was very interesting. And thank you for coming on, and you know, thank you for bringing them on too because that was really um, eye-opening. A lot of stuff we heard because we've not heard this stuff before on this side uh, with the pawn. So thank you so much, sir. Yeah, you're welcome. I heard you guys said you needed some British opinions, and I was like, you know what? These guys really need their story told. Later. Yeah. You know, shy to tell it themselves. So thank you very much for giving them a platform. Of have, course. have a good one, guys. Yep, you too. Yep. Take care of yourself. That was a really interesting conversation. It was. Yeah. It was. I, it's it's cool it's cool to have people like that from like all different walks of life just to kind of give this you know put some context into what it's like just around the world you know mm-hmm. um i know last week we had trent on and he he was great 
uh, like he 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 gave a, so, us some really great insight on California. We really don't hear that much, like on the news or anything like that. There's really not much they they talk about with California. So unless you're actually there, it's not like you really you don't quite know, get it. I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the and thing too with these the guys. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Because like you hear about you know some crazy things that happen, like the Tommy Robinson arrest. But you don't hear the daily crazy occurrences like where they say they can just pretty much arrest you for breach of the peace. Like if they don't, you know, like what you're doing or they're afraid you're going to start something. And makes V for Vendetta, makes 1984 all seem like they're not, you know, just like these sort of dystopian things. They're more, more possible now in Britain, I think, particularly than ever. I think America, we're very lucky and have a lot of hope, but countries like Britain, man, are in a rough spot. Mm -hmm. But speaking of America, uh, I wanted to touch quickly on the impeachment stuff since that's Aww. had some has some small things. I know it's, it's 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 it is dumb, it is frivolous, and we all know how it's going to play out, but. The Dems announced the articles of impeachment saying they announced two. They said Trump did abuse of power, obstruction of Congress, and they're getting these charges from, um, they claim that Trump pressured Ukraine to investigate the Bidens and that he obstructed the Democrats by refusing to comply with subpoenas and directing members of his administration to do the same thing. And they're going to vote on this on Wednesday. The House will, and we all know the House is going to pass it, and then it's going to go to the Senate, and when it gets to the Senate, they're just going to say Trump's you know, they're going to quit, tr or I forget the term is, but they're going to say Trump's fine. He didn't do anything wrong here, and he's going to stay president. He's going to win 2020 in a landslide. And, <coughs> you know, we're going to see people lose their minds again and again and again. So that's all I have to say on it, honestly. What do you think, Phil? Uh, there's nothing more unimportant than this whole uh, this whole impeachment mess like i go to work and uh, and the, like people are listening uh some of my coworkers listen to it in their car they listen to cnn and i'm like oh god why 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 would you why would you listen to it you know what's going on and it's not very important like he's like yeah but but the impeachment's only happened a couple of times in American history. I'm like, look, they've soiled the 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 Democrats have soiled the impeachment process. Mm -hmm. Like the impeachment process was created to give actual checks and balances. The, yeah. This impeachment process has been purely used as a political tool. Yeah. And like and it's not even yet all the only thing it was done to try to win political points and it totally backfired. It totally backfired. The only people it won over were really weren't won over anyway. Like they you already got them. You are, you already got those support, those weirdo supporters that actually support this impeachment mess. They they're with, they're on their side anyway. Like, yeah. You're trying to get moderates. You're trying to get moderates and maybe even a few Republicans to try to back you up if you think this impeachment thing is going to go through and you don't have any of them. And it just and it just the the impeachment process just got worse and worse by the day. And, and now, now nothing's and going like, to happen. Nothing is going to happen to Trump and nothing is going to happen for the American people. That's what they're really screwing themselves is yeah. Democrats, like, after they announce it, they go, oh, by the way, we're going to... Nancy Pelosi pulls out the USMCA and is like, oh, mm -hmm. remember that trade deal I haven't been putting to the floor for the past year? Yeah, let's do it now. And people are going to look at that and be like, screw you. Like, you know, why? You're, you're, you're so phony and fake to bring it up now. And Trump's obviously going to say, hey, guys, let's vote for this thing and actually get something done and be the, you know, adults in the room here. And it's going to look so silly on them. I mean... Oh God! I like you said. This is so stupid and pointless. It is the least like in, when impeachments happen, like with Nixon and with Clinton, people were glued to their TVs. Like, oh my God, what's gonna happen this time? It's like nobody cares. I've never seen a a people care less about an impeachment ever. That's why, like, when I, I I almost forget to mention it, you know, on the show 
because it's so stupid. But it's all I gotta say, really. Yeah, it's like it's like it would have been different. Like a, it would have been different if it was like if it was some quid pro quo for something false. It's like it's like he legitimately asked about something that was going on and it's not like hunter biden's not corrupt yeah exactly you know, like it's not like yeah it, I, the, sto- the 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 story that oh well the the the, the, the storyline of hunter biden is absolutely incredible mm. I, I <laughs> it's enough to laugh but not in a not so much in a funny way mm. but uh yeah well what we can do, because um, we didn't talk about this a few weeks ago when uh, the movie came out, because we like to do movie reviews here, uh, <laughs> you know, so we, two of us here at least, saw uh, Martin Scorsese's new film, The Irishman, that was on Netflix and in select theaters. It's three and a half hour long, um, three way between De Niro, Pacino, and Pesci on screen together. I believe for the first time ever and there was also some de-aging technology because it shows like the life of this one guy throughout the whole film um so those are sort of the things i that's all i knew about this film going into it i didn't know anything about it until i saw it and i was surprised to see that there's this jimmy hoffa storyline here that's what pacino plays is a uh, hoffna or did I say Jimmy Pacino? Al Pacino. <laughs> Al Pacino plays um, Jimmy Hoffa. And I thought he was great as that. Uh, but overall, I think it was... I, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think it was that great. I thought it was good and had some good stuff going for it. I think there was some good acting. I think there was good set design, good cinematography, and good acting moments and some good character moments, some good story moments. But I think overall... I'm not gonna lie, we didn't get the point of it. And I really didn't like walk away from it like wowed or anything. Or I mean, it, it was too long, I felt. Like you could trim so much from that movie. And there were some interesting angles with like the uh, daughter of uh, De Niro's character that could have been explored way more. Um, we'll keep it to non spoilers for now, but what was your non spoiler takeaway from it, Phil? Nah, I, I was. The the more I think about it, the more I I'm not as like I thought it was okay. It was good, not great. Yeah. But now I'm starting to think that it it might have been average. It might and now I'm starting to lean more toward average. Cause like like Al Pacino played uh Jimmy Hoffa, but it was like you really he didn't really do that good of an acting job. Like it, it was more it was Al Pacino. Yeah, like, it was like Pacino. Al Pacino. Like yeah. if Al Pacino played a, a any role, yeah, it would that would be it. Like yeah. it just it just so happens in this movie he was Jimmy Hoffa. Like, but it's still Al Pacino. It's like all the mannerisms, all the thing. Like, what is Scarface Jimmy Hoffa? What's going <laughs> on? See that like, the, the thing too. I know you've seen a lot more Scorsese movies and a lot more. Pacino yeah. movies. I'm not gonna lie. I have seen only parts of Wolf of Wall Street. I seen. I think Hugo wasn't that a Scorsese film. Um, <laughs> I seen that because we saw it in the class. Uh, and then I've seen this film. Haven't seen Goodfellas. I know it's a crime. I haven't seen Casino. I know it's a crime too. But I know that those are better movies than this. Like, oh, yeah. and oh, I yeah. haven't seen them. So that says something on its own. Yeah. I thought this movie just had good moments, but as an overall package. I went back and forth. I started thinking, was, when I walked out of it, I thought eh, it was okay. I wasn't impressed. And then I heard some people talking about it. I was like, eh, it seems a little bit better than I expected. Now I'm back to where you are, which I'm like, this is it's okay. I mean, I just, yeah. we're going to non, oh, we're going to spoilers now. Uh, so everybody, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Um, I will say there are two moments that really stuck out to me. It's just not good at all. Like when, um, De Niro lands in Detroit and he's driving that car for so long. He goes to that house where they eventually killed Jimmy Hoffa. That was so long and ridiculous. And the one scene in the beginning when his daughter, um, something happens in some grocery store with his daughter and the shop owner. And he goes back to beat up the shop owner. 
and you see him pull the guy out, throw him on the street, and when he's beating him up, it looks like old De Niro. This doesn't look like some third, you know, forty-year-old De Niro like beating up. Like he's slowly like kicking him, and I'm just like, see those moments like that, just like it, it, it hurt it for me. It took me out of it. Yeah, I'm so first. Off, I'm surprised that they found somebody smaller than De Niro <laughs> to actually. <laughs> To play the store owner, like that was that was pretty incredible. That <laughs> That's a feat. Pretty incredible. They found someone. Yeah, because <laughs> he's like this. He's like this little this brittle old man now. Like, what? How do you? How are you gonna? How you? How is that gonna play out? And it's like you could tell in that little scene where he's supposed to be beating him up. It's like you could tell. Just he's so he's old, and it's like there's no way. There's no way those punches would land or be effective in real life at all. Yeah, I know. Um, and it's just, I'm, I'm, I've never been a fan of De Niro. I, I think he just phones in this role. Like, there was nothing, like, like that, that, that impressed me about it. You know what I mean? No, I, I, I don't think, I, I really don't think, I, I like, the, the shot, the the shot to start the movie like they were going in the the old old folks, old folks home. home yeah and it, that was kind of cheesy like the, the the cinematography and the what to start the to start the movie was very bland mm. i was like uh it was very I, I mean, much like, like things he's done before too from what i yeah, understand like, yeah. and the I think thing they tried to yeah they tried to fit the storyline and then they tried to like they tried to add what they thought happened or something. I don't know. It's, it's just very, I don't know. I, I just, there, there, I just, what I wasn't buying some of the missing pieces to the storyline. I, I don't know. I, and I the thought whole thing, too, it, was, it was okay. It was okay. I thought near the end, like you knew he was going to die and they spent like 20 minutes just like, you sitting there just waiting for him to finally kick the bucket. And it's like, it drags on for way too long. I just, it just didn't engage me that much. And like, they assumed, and they, did, did, is it me? Uh, like they, I guess they assumed that JFK was killed on a mob head or something. Yeah, they do. Like, I'm like, uh, I don't know. That's kind of you can't you can't you can't really get away with that. Like I, I, I mean, yeah, they really leaned hard into that. Like they assumed yeah. that Hoffa was in bed with like all these mobs, and they assumed that yeah, JFK was taken out by the mob. Which look, is it fun to play with in a movie? Absolutely, it's very yeah. you know, it's movie stuff that people are gonna eat up. But it's just, I, I just. Like I said, I, what I didn't get was like, what is the point of this story? You know, like Robert De Niro's character is an awful person throughout the whole thing. And at the end of it, he has no remorse. He's just like, yeah, I did bad things. It's all right. It's fine. I, I did it for my family. And it's like, well, did, did you? Did you really? Did, did your family really like it? And he doesn't seem to care when his daughter's mad at him at the end. Like it just, I just didn't get a point to it or there was any sort of message. It was just sort of like, yeah, here's a, you know, a terrible person does terrible things. That's it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I felt the same way. It's like, there was really no, there was, there was, there was really no substance. No, oh, I mean, there was some substance, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough to cover the storyline that they were trying to cover. Yeah, right? exactly. Because it was a big deal, like when Jim, when Jimmy Hoffa went missing, yeah. that was like a big deal back in the day. And like, you know, it, it's very I don't know. It felt like the the storyline just felt a lot to be desired. Yeah, yeah. And I I thought it's interesting to do a movie with Hoffa and like these mobs, you know, ties him. I think it's interesting, but they just I I feel like they didn't do as much as they could have with it. I don't think it reached its full potential and you get a feeling of disappointment because of that. But, um, yeah, I, th I think that wraps it up. I would, I don't know if I'd recommend anybody watching this cause you guys sit through three and a half long hours. You know, that's where another thing too. I love long movies. I want to make that clear. Like I love epics like 
Lawrence of Arabia, Ben Hur, Lord of the Rings. Like I love that stuff. I love when movies give you a not like you you well, feel like you've earned your you know money with it. But this I'll one I didn't it. feel it. Yeah, the movie's not terrible. No, it's not. But but, but lower your expectations. Yeah. When you see it because you're looking at because you're looking at. So when you see it, like when you see the the all the people that are in it, you know, you got the Martin Scorsese directing, you've got De Niro, Pacino, Pesci, all these guys, all these guys. It's, it's a loaded lineup, right? And you're looking at this thing and you're like, wow, this thing could really take off. Right? Yeah. And just lower your expectations. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's a watchable movie, but don't like if, as long as you lower your expectations, I think you'll be fine. Yeah, that's fair. So we have about 10 minutes left. Um, we could talk about the YouTube harassment stuff. That's terribly interesting to me, except that YouTube now wants to have this vague definition of harassment, which could get a lot of videos pulled down. But our channel's still up, so yay for that. We haven't been, yeah, we haven't been yeah. kicked off yet. I was getting suspicious yesterday because I was uploading two videos, and it kept sitting at 0% processing, and I was like, uh-oh. What are they doing? Are they screwing with us here? This is a bit fishy, but videos did upload, so we're fine on that. Um, is there anything you want to talk about? I mean, it could be totally unrelated. It could just be anything. Oh, Trump Trump completed phase one of the, the uh, China trade deal. That's yes, pretty awesome. Yes, he did. Yeah. All that. Like, if if he manages to pull this off, I don't know. I don't know. I, I I think he's gonna pull something off. I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, I, like, I, I don't know what the deal's gonna encompass, but the fact that we're getting a deal says something. I I'm I I I heard people like when it when it when it started to get done. Uh yeah. I, when it, when I was um uh, when I was looking at the trade deal um like they had uh CNBC had Jim Cramer on to talk about it and he immediately was saying something like oh th this is a disaster china's playing us mm -hmm. and i'm like how do you how do you know that china's playing us like it, these 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 trade deals are like hundreds of pages like like how how do you know like this thing just got signed and you're already saying, Oh, China's playing us. How do you know? Maybe, maybe if it could be that we won, like it could be that we won, like, you don't, you just don't know. And I just, I, I I'm like, well, I don't know. And I Kramer's think. not a Trump hater, is he? He's kind of 50, 50 on Trump. I uh, think. I don't know. He works. See, see, I have to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. He works for so it's not, I really have to like, I have to tiptoe on that one. I know. Uh, that's what's tricky. I know. I, I, I've been sometimes a little bit um, confused on where he aligns. But uh, it's – I I think, though, that, like I said, if there's anybody that's going to get the best out of this, it's going to be Trump than any other president. Uh, but I I think it's an interesting I, time that happened, too, like right around the U.K. elections. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah. I, I, I feel like – the, so the phase one, I think a chunk of it was the the agricultural purchases for mm -hmm. China, and that's a big one. I think I think this might have benefited the United States when I think about how much like Ch China needs agriculture, <laughs> like bad. It, it needs bad, uh, and and like you could tell, like we were hurting a little bit but china was hurting worse and so how long do they think they're gonna like they, they were gonna go toe to toe and the longer this whole thing went on and it's like okay so trump is heavily favored to win the 2020 election now so now china's probably thinking oh now we have to do because they're they they're not going to be able to live with four years, four more years of this mess. And 
So it's tied. It's tied. It's just like, okay. I th- I feel like I feel like we might have gotten the better of that deal, but I yeah. I mean, of course I haven't seen it, so I don't know for sure, but but. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Is a lot of these people like on CNN are like jumping these conclusions on it. And I bet, ha- you know, most of them haven't even like looked at the actual trade deal and probably don't even understand what all this stuff means. Like, I'll be honest. I don't understand what a lot of stuff means. So I just say, I trust Trump. He gets this stuff better than me. I trust him. Yeah. I, I wonder how this is. I, if a trade deal does get done, I wonder how this hits the uh, entertainment industry too. Because, because, like, they've, like, I think, I feel like, I feel like China wants to create their own Hollywood. Like, they want to create their own Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, but the, the trade war has kind of, I don't know, there, there's, there's, ever since the trade war, there's been a whole lot of, like, Chinese investment in Hollywood, Hollywood. Um, so I, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm assuming that if a trade deal goes through, they might, they could actually go back and do their own stuff, which could hurt Hollywood. Um, oh, absolutely. I mean, that's the thing I, I mentioned this with Trent. Like I don't get when these groipers and some of these other people on the right obsess over the Israeli influence on America. It's a Chinese influence. That's the biggest issue the biggest hindrance to america first they have way more power way more people way more dominance way more authoritarianism than israel could ever have there and they have all the manufacturing they have all these things going on yeah there's a whole bunch of yeah and yeah it's like israel israel is not as important to me as say china or saudi arabia or some of these or, or iran so a lot of these guys, um, like, you know, Saudi, Saudi Arabia, they had like, uh, there, there's, there was some, I think there was some Saudi, um, investment group that, uh, dropped a, a, a while ago, they dropped some investment in, into Twitter. I'm like, you don't think that's going to have an influence on how they behave, you know, that if a whole big injection of money uh goes into that company you don't think that's gonna, not going to come with strings you don't right. think like and and you and i can't imagine that that's very pro-america like we're energy like you the u.s is energy independent that's not good for saudi arabia saudi arabia is rich in oil we're we're here digging up our own stuff you think that's going to be that you think that's a positive light for saudi arabia I want to mention something else because you said Saudi Arabia uh, kind of ties into this a bit. Uh, This is breaking news. Trump is expected to announce next week that he's going to be pulling thousands of troops out of Afghanistan. So all those hardline people that are harping about Trump not fulfilling promises. Well, there you go. He's found the right time to pull out, sounds like, and he's pulling more people out. Yeah. I I hope it's safe, like, because I've been over there. I, I... I hope it's safe and like, very, like more silent. I, I, cause like just telling somebody when they're being pulled out, that's a bad idea. Yeah. That's, that's an Obama. Yeah. Yeah. That literally is. Um, but I think, I think they're going to, I think they're going to, they're going to do better with this one. I, I, yeah, I think it. so too. I think Trump is way more strategic with these pullouts. You know, yeah. people expect well, like because people on the you know right ex- in a funny way expect him to do what Obama does. They literally want him to literally just one day say, "Hey, we're pulling everyone out and pull them all out." I'm like, that's not how these things work. Well, he's you know he, he's good at hire. He's good at appointing the right people. Like he's a good at appointing the right people and then listening to those people. Like if. And I I do believe that um, that there's been, I mean, because you you didn't really get that vibe with like Obama and some of no. some of some of his yeah some of the people that were appointed uh, he he kind of butted heads with a lot of them. Um, 
Last thing I'll mention too, uh, for last few seconds here, is that Time Magazine also <laughs> picked Greta Thunberg as their Person of the Year. Uh. They didn't pick the Hong Kong protest. Yes, protest groups and more than one person can be a points times person of the year. For anybody who says that they've done it before, they didn't pick the Hong Kong protesters who have been on national news for months and been risking their life. They have picked Greta Thunberg. Absolutely crazy. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, time is trash. I mean, it's it's not uh, it's nowhere close what it used to be. It's um because it's not it's not owned by Time Warner, and it's not like it's owned by um it's owned by the guy the the the, the creator of Salesforce. Um, so it's not like. I don't know. It's 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 pushing an it's definitely pushing an agenda too. I I, I think uh, they 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 gave another award to 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 somebody. I think they gave the award to the uh, um the the people that um were in the impeachment hearings. Oh, like God. some of the people that yeah, the whistleblower is one of the uh, actual yeah. finalists too, which is comical. Yeah, I'm like, what? These are these these, these people are like partisan garbage. Like, I, I, you're gonna give them an award? Yeah, okay. Thank you for listening. We'll be back next week with more real news. <laughs>